so today we're looking at uh, the digestion of starch solution into sugar solution using the enzyme amylase. Uh, I will demonstrate this practical to you using a buffer solution of pH 5 and you will repeat the practical at pHs 6, 6.4, 7 and 8. To do this you'll need to control the temperature conditions that the enzyme buffer solution and starch solution are at. I'm using a water bath here to do that with a thermometer and a test tube containing the correct volumes of each solution. The best way to achieve that temperature is to part fill the beaker with cold tap water and then use hot water from the kettle to bring the temperature up to about 30 degrees. Throughout the practical, you would need to monitor the temperature of the water bath and adjust it with hot or cold water accordingly. So, uh, to do this practical, I took uh, two centimetres cubed of starch solution using my syringe here, and I transferred that into the test tube labelled S starch. I did the same for the buffer solution, two centimetres cubed of, and now I'm just going to do one centimetre cubed for the enzyme. Centimetres cubed is the same as millilitres. It's a good idea to get those solutions into your three tubes early on and allow the temperatures to adjust. It would also be wise to measure the temperature from inside one of the tubes rather than of the water that the tubes are in because then you're actually measuring the temperature of the solutions that you're going to test. Then you can put these to one side for a minute and focus your attention now on your spotting tiles. Um, you'll also need a test tube rack and a timer and a pipette. We already have in our spotting tile the iodine solution, which, if it turns black is or dark purple, is a positive test for starch. After the temperatures of the solutions have all adjusted to as close to 30 degrees as you can get them, you need to transfer all three solutions into one test tube. This could be a little bit tricky. There's one. And there's two. Once you've added the three solutions together, the enzyme will start digesting the starch solution. So you need to start your timer straight away. You'll also need to take a zero reading immediately. This will show a, a black colour change indicating the presence of starch. Then every 10 seconds on your timer, you need to repeat the process until you no longer get a positive test for starch. The enzyme has digested the starch into sugar solution. You might not want to be too generous with the amount of solution you're putting in because if the test drags on, you would run out of solution. As you can probably see, there is a slight difference in the colour as the time is going on. It's getting lighter each time. And at this stage, there is no colour change, meaning that all the starch in the solution has been digested. So once you've got a uh, non-positive test for starch, you can then just count along the number of wells in the spotting tile, each well representing 10 seconds until you get to the end time. And that would be your time that the starch has been digested. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, that's 120, 30, 40, 50, 60, 170 seconds for starch to be digested at pH 5. Then you would complete, repeat the test with a different pH and hopefully gain some results that's not dissimilar to this one, where you can see time increasing on the y-axis and pH on the x. And the optimum pH you would expect is 7. Using this range of solutions, though, doesn't give us a very conclusive result. All we can tell is that the optimum pH occurs somewhere between 6.4 and 8, and that optimum pH may be 7. 
So a good opportunity to further, further investigation would be to investigate the pHs in between that range to try and find the actual optimum pH. You could also plot the rate of reaction against the pH of the solution, which would show the inverse relationship, showing that the fastest rate of reaction occurred at 7 pH. But again, we wouldn't know exactly where the optimum is in that.